fellow brigands. I look forward to playing this game of chance with you. Once you're in the system, you are in the system. Per section 312-64782, paragraph 626 of boarding protocol 1516. And it didn't take too long to figure out that Chromicon is great at cards, but dumb as hell with people. We figure all that out and... Don't take candy from strangers. So everybody just suck on some calm. ABC's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 6, Episode 3, Fear and Loathing on the Planet of Kitson. The After Buzz After Show starts right now. You're tuned in to After Buzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz <laughs> Yeah, well, just don't take stri- candy from random strangers. Well, yeah, you shouldn't do that. Yeah, like, well, because that's like the first thing we've learned. I mean, like they were hungry, but apparently they had Ritz Animal Crackers, or, or yeah, they had Ritz Crackers or something they on the ship. Animal crackers. Yeah, animal they crackers. Had animal crackers. Yeah. Now because who doesn't go into intergalactic space without <laughs> animal crackers? That's the <laughs> whole point. If they had animal crackers, why are they eating the random alien because candy? Because they wanted the candy, the garlic-looking purple <laughs> and blue candy. <laughs> the toffee. It looked great. It did look it good. It tasted amazing. Yeah. Yeah. What was the problem? Oh, that's right. It was a psychedelic. <laughs> yeah. That's how I feel often as I'm sitting here as we are talking all things Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 6, Episode 3, Fear and Loathing on the Planet of Kitson. I am joined here with the amazing panel of just Rachel, but she is amazing. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, everybody. I am Rachel Goodman. Glad to be on the panel again. And as I say, I am the host who's also <laughs> amazing. My name is Teron. Uh, if you don't know who I am, you haven't been watching Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. or talking about it with us and the panel. And when I say panel, I do include all of you at home because this panel is as much, if not more, a part of you. Thank you so much for watching us each and every week. This week, we are talking ABC's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 6, Episode 3, Fear and Loathing on the Planet of Kitson. Obviously, a play on the fear and loathing of Las Vegas. Las so, Vegas. So that's the whole concept, right? Yeah, the book and then the movie, which, yeah, yeah so I'm not surprised at what happened. I, I knew, It I knew, played. Yeah, it played well. I thought that they had enough of the, like, the, you know, serio drama comedic moments to kind of pass it off as, like, a reference to... Uh, fear and loathing in Las Vegas. So I, I thought it was very appropriate. Well, it was great. It was a great, and we're gonna talk about all that, and we're gonna break down. We're gonna start off with uh, Gemma's decision, which started all off, and then of course space, the final frontier. We're gonna get to Kitson and talk about Kitson, the planet Kitson. Of course, there's two things to do there. There's the brothels and the casinos. Which one would you choose? Uh, we're gonna get into the inspection, go to the casino, talk about that poker of death game that we saw happen. The crew comes to save the day, or did they? We're gonna talk about the hunt. Hunter, man, that guy has a problem. Drugs, and of course, Fitz and Gemma, Fitz and Gemma almost, almost make it, but they, they don't make it. They almost, oh. It's like strangers in the night, passing ships, every cliche you can think of. We're going to choose the top three MVPs of the episode. Get some news and gossip. I heard you have some great stuff. I, that I do. Everyone's going to want to stay, t- uh, stay tuned to hear. <laughs> yeah. And, of course, our special segment, Whoa, where we get into the whoa moment of the of the episode and drop some prediction knowledge on you. But before we get to all that, Rachel, what were your overall thoughts on the episode? I was frustrated in a good way. Um, I... Gemma... First of all, Gemma, you know, actually getting so close to Fitz, knowing he's there... Daisy not wanting to stay and wanting to go, which kind of was the smart decision, but kind of not the decision that she knew Gemma would make. They finally get there, and then it's just, they're so close to Fitz, and yet so far, and they never quite make it to him. Frustrated. But I'm glad that Gemma (laughs) saw Fitz. I would have been very frustrated had she not seen him, and everything just passed again, because that's how it started off when they got there and the ship was taking off and I thought something like that was going to happen. So I'm so glad how it played out. I will say this, when it comes to uh, when it comes to Quake, when it comes to Daisy, she made the right decision. They should have went home. Gemma was wrong. It doesn't matter that the end result was the right result. The concept of making a decision for everyone else based on her quote-unquote feelings, as I throw the quotation marks in the air, the concept is that's not fair to them. And I'm glad they talked about it, but I don't think they talked about it enough. Other than that, this episode was amazing. It was so good. Even the crazy stuff, them being high, and then all of a sudden Quake knowing how to fight perfectly, all that stuff was so fun. Yeah, I agree. And just kind of going off what you said too, the fact that, um, going off the fact that Daisy made a good decision, 
The fact that they are so hungry that they're resorting to eating random candy they find does say, okay, yeah, obviously they don't have resources. They should have gone back. Gemma did make a mistake. But at the same time, I expected that from her because she wasn't going to just go back and leave without another plan to come back. I do say we have to note that it's interesting that almost every alien is humanoid in a way and they all look Terran or as we call it, you know, human yeah. in our own form. To the point where the only way to tell a difference is if you speak and don't know something, right? So why is there not compatible food of some sort? You would think, since you're familiar with Earth people, clearly you have Earth people around enough to know you're not surprised by them. And I would say there's got to be lettuce on every planet. Like, if there's <laughs> nothing else, there's got to be some form of vegetation. Yeah. When in doubt, eat the fruit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And it's that kind of brings in the question, too. Well, what percentage like, you know, Earth is obviously a certain percentage of water. What percentage of water are these other planets? Do they even have vegetation the same way? And I do find it interesting the way that um, obviously this is a psychedelic for humans and it's probably not a psychedelic for other beings. So I'm curious how that works and how how that like, you know, substance affects other life forms it's interesting i that's actually a good point i i hope the chat is alive and we have the chat uh, on board and then of yeah. course we have ryan in the back ryan what up as he mans the chat uh and everyone back there so please uh keep chatting away are there any chat shout outs you would like to give well yes there first of all there are a ton of people in the chat so thank you guys for tuning in um i'm just gonna go through and say ivan soto you get mvp for chat uh, i have consistently seen you commenting we have haywood wong um hubby joe's in the chat dinner beef um ghost 8386 a lot of people are talking about deke and how he can't be dead and <laughs> where is deke we need to yeah. get some deke what ivan soto actually made a comment and i think i was correcting him as we went into the yes he was talking about how um when Gemma, when they're on Kitson and Gemma's high and she's talking about uh she's making a reference to harry potter she Ivan said that she referenced being in Gryffindor, but it was Ravenclaw. She did it. Daisy said, you're in Gryffindor, and she said, no, Ravenclaw. She corrected it. Ravenclaw, of course, being the smart school, the smart yeah. house yeah. Of, uh, of Hogwarts. So she is very much Ra uh, Ravenclaw. Yeah. She is Ravenclaw. Oh, I yeah. don't know which house you would be. Slytherin. You would not be in Slytherin. <laughs> no. <laughs> I would be in Slytherin. <laughs> Even the way you're laughing might be in Slytherin, but the people, way you... people think Hufflepuff, uh, yeah. but Slytherin. Slytherin, Slytherin. <laughs> oh man! Whoa. Okay, we're getting another side of Rachel. Let's talk about whoa. Talk about that craziness. Let's talk about Gemma's decision. Yeah. Gemma makes the decision for everybody to get into space. She's like, "We're going there." She makes, she pushes the button. And then at the end of last episode, we jump into what begins the beginning of this episode and we skipped yeah. a whole episode on their storyline so it was so good to see this entire uh storyline play out yeah and we get Gemma's decision to take everyone i think i still think it was the unfair decision yeah um i yeah. uh oh you kind of <laughs> like her decision i i do like her decision but it's because i'm coming from a place of i am always team fit sevens not to say that you aren't but I'm coming from the perspective of she's come too far and she doesn't want to give up on finding him now, especially the fact that she has a hunch that he is there and not just like a random hunch, but it's like a scientific hunch based on how she knows him and how she knows like what the way that his brain works. She knows what he would do and where he would be. Well, she did also rub the jewel that she was holding, <laughs> yeah. so it must yeah. be true. No, you can't just base things on feelings, especially when other people are involved, their lives are at stake. What happens? How does Gemma feel if all three of them die because yeah. it's a result of something she chose? Let's let's I keep playing you. it out because it plays out well. But there was a t there was a point where I thought something was going to happen at Davis and it didn't, thankfully, but it could have. And then what? Yeah. And then Gemma would have been like, but we're so close to saving this one person. Yeah, that's true. And it goes back to the happiness principle of <laughs> do you what do you do for the greater good and not just for one single person? So I agree with that. I think that as someone who's in a position of power, even though Gemma is not the leader, she still should have recognized that, OK, she's putting everybody in danger and should have just gone alone. 
Um, but at the same time, I don't think that they would have let her go. They on. probably wouldn't have let her, but I will say something. She was challenging Daisy. Yeah. Several, <laughs> several times in the beginning, and they didn't follow up with that. Yeah. Because all of a sudden it became ladies' night, of course, because they were high. However, <laughs> that, that, I didn't understand that. Yeah. At before all. <laughs> ladies' night, it was definitely Gemma's night to push <laughs> Daisy's buttons and be yeah. like, so? I don't care. Oh, you're the leader? And? Like, there was a lot of that. A lot of eye rolling and a lot of. And what are you going to do about it? Yeah, yeah, no. And it you could see a huge difference once they were actually in ladies' night that, okay, I don't care. Like, I get that they were, like, tripping, but I still, that, that bothered me the most of the episode is that even though they were on this drug trip, they, Gemma suddenly forgot about Fitz until he showed up in a suit. <laughs> that did not make sense to me. That's actually a good point. Yeah. Gemma. Like, okay, for somebody who says, oh, I know where he is, like, okay, I don't, I don't care if she's, like, tripping balls. Like, you still would know, okay. I don't know. I mean, it did take a little dancing monkey on the tip of the, <laughs> uh, her, her straw. That yeah. was a good That was a good take. Let's um, talk about that whole, so we're in space. Yeah. And we get to Naro Atsia. Naro And then we decide to go to Kitson. Okay. Yeah. How'd that play out for you? I mean, it made sense. It made sense how it did. I like how we were introduced to the hunters and didn't know right away what they were. Um, we didn't even know what he was capable of. He just kind of showed up, and um, we didn't see him right off the bat. We saw him after the inspector. I like how they introduced him, um, like, organically, because we didn't even really know what why Enoch woke Fitz up exactly we kind of had an idea but now it all makes sense with the hunter and it's kind of like it reminded me of flash i don't know if you watch that show at all but there are like there are time hunters so whenever the flash runs back in time, which he does every single time yeah by the way after saying i'm never gonna do this again just yeah. So, yeah exactly sure exactly so like so it's, it kind of reminded me of that is that when you disrupt the timeline there are consequences even if you survive even if it wasn't Fitz's fault because <laughs> this Fitz didn't wake up yet and it's not even, you know, he didn't do all of this. So um, it, at this point, I feel like it, it makes sense. Like, I like how this is. I felt like they were setting it up because we did find out that there's different types of Chromacons and that was something that was first introduced just last episode. Yeah. Where where Chromacon brings it up and then it's like, oh, we're different levels and I'm not the fighting type. Assinuating that there are the fighting type. That's why I knew immediately that they were the the fighting Chromacons. But why don't they all know the timeline has shifted? Yeah, that's a really good question. Why they don't know and um, why they're... Why aren't they going after everybody else? Because it's everybody's timeline shift. So the people who really caused it are dead, dead Fitz. <laughs> uh, Gemma, who is trying to get to Fitz. I don't know why they're not running after her. I, I, the only thing I can guess is that Fitz is supposed to be dead. And so they're going back to just kind of make sure that this happens in the past, too, and that everybody else is still alive. So... I will say something about space. And anytime we see the future in any... Because all these planets are... We're going to assume they're technologically advanced simply because if nothing else, if you just look at the weapons, we are still... Our guys are still using just regular guns and bullets and they're using energy particles and, and space docks and all these things. And, and they're so acclimated with alien life forms. So I'm going to assume everyone's technologically advanced. It always... As soon as the future is mentioned, it always becomes dystopian. It's never a good, peaceful, <laughs> great. It's always like, what's on this planet? Brothels and perverts. Yeah. And, and gambling and stabbing. I love, speaking of brothels, I love the You love brothels? That's no. cool. Great to know. <laughs> no, 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 here no. at After Buzz, we love all of you. No, thank you, Rachel. That's enough. Thank you so much. We love all of you. We appreciate you for watching our show each and every week. Great. So... Thank you all for always tuning in and for liking and supporting us. I don't love brothels, by yeah, the way. We all heard that on tape. Ryan, did you get that? Good. Before we Not move to our next... Good, thank, good. You. thank you. Thank you for your support. Before we move to our next topic, though, 
I just want to say thank you to everyone for allowing us to grow and for helping us be the ESPN of TV talk. We could definitely use your help, so be sure to subscribe on YouTube. If you give us a rating on iTunes and leave us a comment, let us know that you did all these things and we will gladly give you a shout out. Um, thank you again for being a part of AfterBuzz. It is amazing being able to come on the show and uh, discuss all of the shows that we love. So thank you again for all of your support. I don't love profits. I don't know. We <laughs> we heard you loud and clear. No, but fine. Please, please, my comment. Or change your your friend loves brothels, Rachel. No, I love the fact that she, that uh, Simmons was like, well, if Fitz went to the brothel, he's dead. No, so he like, better be dead. He better be Why dead. Why dead? Because if it's not at the casino and he's at the brothel, he's yeah. dead. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. But also, I like how Chromicon's like, well, we can just go work at the brothels. I'm, <laughs> I'm versed in ple pleasuring people like, whoa. Yeah. Fitz is like, that's not, yeah. that's not an option. Yes. Bestie. Here we get Kitson. Here we get the planet Kitson. Kitson's yeah. clearly the Las Vegas. I kept seeing either like the dude's picture they kept showing. I kept seeing like a weird Biff from Back to the Future Trump combo. I don't Interesting. Know if you got, I don't know if you got that, but yeah, that's exactly what I was getting. Like, okay, who's this Kitson dude? So that's going to be the guy. Yeah. Who we're going to have to eventually meet. <laughs> I'm sure. Because they brought him up a couple times this episode. I would guess that that's next episode. Yeah. I don't know because remember, I feel like we're flip-flopping episodes back and forth. So I think next episode we're back on Earth. Sarge. And we have to wait for the following episode, which now I am torn between which storyline I like more. Do I like Earth storyline or space storyline? Because Earth storyline is taking too long to develop a little for me. Because it's just too many questions and not enough answers. I think what's bothering me is the fact that this Sarge guy looks just like Coulson and they've alluded to it meaning something more and we haven't gotten that yet. So I'm definitely with you there. Yeah, we just yeah. got nothing. Yeah. Give us something. Yeah. And I mean, we got the ending of um, this episode with him, but yeah, I, I want more too. Ask more questions. Yeah. Again, it was like, oh, stars? No, I'm not talking about stars. Then what are you talking about, bro? <laughs> yeah. Because guess what? <laughs> We're not on your evil team. So we want to know. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, I mean, the way that the grid system lit up in the sky, like obviously not stars but we don't know what they are I, I almost thought satellites but i wasn't sure if that's where they were going and now i'm thinking are they actually good people but they're just doing it in a bad way i don't know it was just a lot of yeah that's what i'm leaning toward too especially if there is a connection with colson and sarge and that maybe we just not... want it to be that though yeah yeah i i, I really do i, I don't want so Colson to be dead. <laughs> yeah, we just want it to be something where it's like Colson's redeemable. He's still a good guy. But yeah, here we're back in space, and in space, Kitson is obviously a brothel in a casino. We never get to the brothel, hoping to see it, but we didn't get there. But we did get to see the casino. The casino had all these games that reminded me of a Star Trek The Next Generation episode when they go to a casino. It's always, like, dark, and it's like, e block now, you play? Like, it's one of those things. <laughs> yeah. Star Wars does a very similar thing. Yeah, it reminded me of the cantina, except if the cantina in Star Wars was a casino. Or if the cantina was just literally one room. Because yeah. it was the smallest. <laughs> it was just one little room of casino games and things. But the fact that we now know Chromicon doesn't register as an autonomous being. It doesn't register as a robot going through sensors. That was a good thing to know. I think that's going to play. Yeah, because it also brings into question, okay, well, yeah, there are androids, there are robots. There, What is this guy exactly? Because I, I never got the sense that Enoch was really just a droid. I got that he was kind of something in between and had more human, not necessarily human qualities, but more like organic qualities. But he did me. have some sentient tendencies because he he's so desperate for for Fitz to be his best friend yeah yeah and he yeah I mean obviously he isn't a real boy <laughs> not to quote the Menguin um but yeah. hold on you're not the Menguin <laughs> apparently I'm not okay yeah okay whatever yeah but no like he I mean he couldn't even really tell when someone was bluffing him at the game so you know clearly he, this is not a full human being or not a full um being of any kind Really? Well, okay. With Chromicon. Gets very upset when he finds out the hunters are after them or he realizes the hunters are after him. He's losing his purpose because he's being decommissioned. Yeah. Does he have a soul or is he just programming? That's a really good question. 
I would argue that it's beyond like that kind of gets into data territory too. Like if we're talking Star Trek, I feel like there is a soul there as much because he's not just a computer that turns off and on. Like there are emotions there. He wanted Fitz to be his best friend. He actually you could see emotion. But then again, does it go back to Ada where she was definitely artificially created, but she had all these human characteristics, including, you know, anger and jealousy. So are they mimicking or are they actually for real? I feel like in his case, it might be for real, but it's hard to determine that at this point because we don't know how he was created. Well, let's ask everyone at home. I want to know below, do you think if Chromicon, is he is he a real boy or not? Is Does he have a soul, yes or no? Just a robot is a no, and more than a robot is a yes. And if you say maybe, I'm going to need that explanation. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> we have uh, After Buzz TV Sci-Fi saying, is he a real boy or not? <laughs> Uh, Ivan Soto says, yes, in a way, um, Xavier Clark, the whole breakdown that Enoch had was pretty funny. Um, and then you're a bad person. Yeah. <laughs> it, was funny, it was funny that he <laughs> lost everything. He lost his purpose and his will to live. He was so down. Eric James says Fitz played Enoch by saying they are best friends. I think he just said it to get what he needed. I, I think he that. believed it. Actually, I disagree. <laughs> I think Fitz believed it because he's like, I've been in space for a year. I don't really have another friend. The only best friend I really have is Gemma. If after Gemma, it's you. Yeah. And I think he meant it. I think he did when it came up the second time. Yeah. But I think there was a moment in like the middle of the episode when he said it just to get Enoch to do what well, he wanted. Well, yeah, but in the middle of the episode, it was one of those like when I, like your partner's like, do you love me? And you're like, yeah, yeah, I love you. Just okay. Yeah, yeah. Can we just, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I still, like, I still think Fritz is coming out though. Fritz is coming back. I, I feel like he always Evil will. Fritz is always, always there. Yeah, oh, he's my favorite. <laughs> um, let's talk about let's talk about this poker game of death, right? So we get to this poker game where uh, Fitz is sitting down. First of all, we get the whole casino situation where. Actually, I don't know if it's poker. It's more like blackjack. When Fitz is playing, it's more like blackjack. In the beginning, Enoch is playing. He he puts his money on a roulette type game, wins, even though it looked like he didn't. Yeah. Because the light went to some random other place, and they're like winner, and they gave him a bunch of money. Then he took this money and went and played that poker game, in which the person next to him played him by bluffing, by saying, "Oh, this is too rich for my blood," and then going all in. Yeah. Yes. Which Fitz saw a mile away. Yeah, and I'm wondering why. I mean, obviously Fitz couldn't say anything because he didn't want to create a distraction. But my thought is, Enoch, why are you betting everything you have? Like, his computer in that in his head should have calculated, yeah, don't do that. Just bet, like, you know, half of it. Well, there are times if the person next to you is out and you're figuring this person is all in, yeah. then you're supposed to call all in. He's yeah. calling. He's basically just matching their bet. And then the guy next to him, of course, goes all in and takes all the money and says specifically the line uh, <laughs> didn't take too long to figure out uh, your friend is great at cards, but dumb as hell at people. Yeah. Which was the strong line of the show. And really affected Enoch, too. Like you could tell that even though he wasn't expressing it completely sure you could see the way that the that it was played on his face that it it was really hurting him before like i kind of feel like that leads into what happens with the hunters when he think when he finally comes to the conclusion that he doesn't have a purpose and i think that definitely like his ego is being hurt well i think also it's not just his ego he just learned about bluffing and there's yeah. lying and he didn't understand it or know it i mean yeah. but you do you know what lying is you lied when you first got to earth uh, yeah. I, I think people forget we've seen enoch this isn't the first time we've seen enoch he pretended to be someone else yeah and then we discovered he's enoch the chromicon so i don't understand why bluffing he, he seems to be going the way not to go back to the CW shows, as you said, with Flash, but with Supergirl, he's on his brainy. Where if you're a 12th level intellect, why are you doing stupid things? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and while it's very fun, it's just an interesting dynamic. Is he extremely smart or not? Yeah. Um, it's also interesting that you bring that up about last season because Enoch seemed 
more not just smarter but capable yeah he seemed like he could handle human interaction um and anything that happened at the poker table was no more than any other typical human even though that guy probably was not human it was very typical of what he might have encountered on earth and he seemed way more capable um last season i agree i feel like he was a lot more capable uh he was able to do things i will say that the crew showing up and saving the day which they did or they didn't i'm not 100 percent sure yet they got there eventually but yeah. not really because they let the hunter loose they were incapable as well yeah why would they even t- here's the thing why would they even take that can- take the food they they have never had it they don't know anything about it and then even daisy taking it that's what i didn't understand and that to me seemed very unrealistic and I know, like, obviously they were... Sure, to- we're in space, we're on Kitson, blah, blah, blah. Very realistic. But Daisy making that decision is not a Daisy thing to do. Yeah, yeah. I don't think any of them making that decision, especially... Because even Gemma, she would probably look at it and say, okay, well, they're, as a scientist, she might be thinking, well, this might affect me differently than any than a different being. So she may... I don't think she would have eaten it either. And then on top of that, once they knew that they were that they were compromised... I think that even no matter what state they were in, I think they would have turned around and gone back, gotten back on the ship. On the ship. Well, my, my, my problem is, of course, once they're inebriated or toxic or high, they don't know what they're doing. But taking that, Gemma is the one who's the scientist. Yeah. And it's not like they were eating a food that looked like something we have. So yeah. if it were Twizzlers and they were like, oh, Twizzlers, and they would eat that. Oh, these are Twizzlers. I know what these are. Oh, that even if you eat some type of meat and go, this is a steak. Uh oh, I found out that it is Terran meat. Well, but it looked like a steak. It looks comparable to something I am accustomed yeah. to eating. It didn't even look like anything we eat. Yeah, yeah. And wouldn't they have taken it and scanned it first? Or I'm sure they have something. Nibbled it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not just. And then no. I think they said the one guy had six. <laughs> yeah, like okay, calm down, I mean, Davis. Davis though, fine. Like I could believe him doing that. Exactly. <laughs> but not the others. Yeah. Davis could do it. Uh, the crew shows up and they go through the inspection. The inspection part was classic. I liked the inspector. I even liked how the hunter showed up and it was a, such a great character. It in some ways reminded me of Patton Oswalt's character in a way. I agree. Yeah. But just not, but a more serious version of it. There was something there. Yeah. Like you didn't, I didn't, like with Patton Oswalt's character, I immediately liked him and wanted him to stick around. But this guy, um, I kind of knew he was just a throwaway character yeah. and wasn't going to be around long. Yeah, but it was a fun character, especially yeah. he was so strict and a- adamant about the rules. And then the hunter shows up. So the hunter shows up and they fight the hunter. The hunter kind of wins quick because he takes out Daisy, which is a smart thing to do. Yeah. And then they get the best of the hunter. Yeah, and then um, uh, the, he didn't even reveal all of his powers immediately either. So it didn't seem... What do you mean? Which... So the whole thing where they had him locked up and then suddenly he kind of gets, he kind of like shifts. He shifts. He yeah. Terminator shifts. Because yeah. he did have a Terminator vibe to begin with. Yeah, yeah. Right? He had this like, I'm the Terminator. I'm hasta la vista, baby. Like yeah. I'm going after my prey no matter what the cost. And then he shifts, shifts his hand and gets out of the handcuff, which could have kind of been Davis being high, but that's not how they filmed it. I don't. I didn't get that because when he was, we saw more of the hallucinations from Gemma and Daisy. Yes. Whereas with Davis, we sort of saw it from our like viewpoint. So it was sober looking at someone who's enacting some someone who's yeah. high or drunk or inebriated. Yeah. So I took it like that was literally what was happening, yeah. not that he was imagining it. Because I feel like with, when they showed that with Daisy and Gemma, there was more like they had some kind of filter over the lens of the camera that kind of made it look like definitely lucky. had like a it, that whole yeah, right, that yeah, little yeah. feel. It was just it was well done. Yeah. But it also we at that point I felt like and I agree with you it took more suspension of disbelief to believe that they were high and doing all these things than anything else that was going on in the show. Yeah, and they could have done this a different way too. Instead of them eating this candy, which I don't, I think that was the to me that's the most unrealistic part. Okay, they would. There's no way they would have just eaten it. And if they were really that hungry, we needed to see that they were that hungry first. Like, don't show that there are animal crackers that they could have eaten over this random alien. Food. What they could have done is have the have the the people that they went to go get the ship from be like well, here we have these treats you can have some they're good Ter- even terrans love them yeah or something of that nature because we see 
that they have uh, psychedelic properties when Chromacon doesn't let Fitz eat one when he was trying to eat one. Yeah. But he's way more hungry than they are. Exactly. And um, he doesn't, like, even if even without Enoch, though, like, so let's just pretend that they, you know, didn't eat these, these random toffees. There could have been a million other ways that they kept Gemma and Daisy from reaching Fitz that I think would have been more realistic and would have given the same effect. But would they have been as fun? No. <laughs> because this was fun. No. So in that sense, no, because like I do like that we see these two very wound up people kind of unwinding and letting go. They were having ladies night. <laughs> <Woo! laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it seemed fun and they were just there. I will say something. There was a point where they were being especially Daisy turned around and was the poker player from the table. I'm so glad that nothing happened because I did think you're on a planet where brothels are so common and they're so disturbing that and the inspector doesn't even want to mention what they do. So on that planet. So when that happened, I was like, Oh my gosh, please don't let something happen to Daisy, yeah. like pull her. And then she has to quake him off or something, but they didn't even go in that direction. They just like kind of teased it and nothing happened with it. I thought it was going to go in that direction. Yeah. I was glad it didn't obviously, but just, I thought that that's exactly what they were going to show is that she's in a vulnerable place and this guy takes it in a vulnerable position. Yeah. It was a bunch. And yeah. I, I'm so glad they didn't take that route at all. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I, I feel like that would have been the, I feel like that kind of thing has been done so many times on TV too, that it's just, it's very uncomfortable. It was already uncomfortable watching them like that, to be honest. So, um, for some random dude to take advantage of her right when they're, you know, well on the strange place. Yeah. I just, I would not have. I did wonder why Quake, a uh, Daisy didn't say I'm Quake, destroy of worlds when they saw the other two people. Like, why did you even bring out weapons? It's clearly worked. Everyone up to this point has known who you are. And then this episode, they just stopped bringing it up. Yeah, exactly. And the, I, I wonder, too, now that they have gone back, if she's known as Destroyer of Worlds, if there are no worlds that have been destroyed. So I don't know. Uh, but they would. They should at least, like you said, like they know who she is. So you would think that once she started using her powers, people would back away. Would be like, oh no, that's Quake. Quake, who's clearly instilling fear everywhere else, because we opened up to that in the first episode of the season. So yeah. you would think they would bring it back, and they just dropped it. Uh, another concept that I I liked, of course, was when Daisy kicked everyone's butt, and she does so in style, even though she's high. But all of a sudden, she sobers up. Gemma, of course, helps her at first, but then and then she's good to go. And I think for me. Uh, I guess that was realistic. I guess, like, there's always a point. It wasn't realistic, but it was fun. <laughs> yeah. Once again, we're back on the fun tip. <laughs> yeah. Okay, it was fun. I was, let me just put it this way. I was glad that it worked out that um, it, it was, you know, she ended up being able to fight them off. And then we got the focus back to Fitz and Enoch and Gemma. I loved that scene where Gemma walks up and the security guard is there. And he is making her question everything. And I genuinely felt like for the first time in a long time, Gemma was questioning who she was and why she was there. That's a great point. And he was he was kind of a nice guy. Yeah, yeah. He was kind of just a reasonable person. Yeah, like he's like your typical bouncer who's just like, hey, you okay? Like you had too many to drink. Like he knew she was on something. Like I don't know if he knew she was on something, but he knew she was inebriated. So he's just trying to talk her down off the ledge. And she is legitimately like at that point in her high where she's like, oh, yeah, well, maybe I I'm not who I think I am. Yeah, because so much had happened and they really were super high at that point. But he basically questions her with some philosophy. Yeah. Like a girl like you shouldn't even be doing any of this stuff. What are you? What's wrong with you? Yeah. And she's like and she's just like, yeah, well, you know what? And like she didn't seem to argue with him. And so that makes me think, too, when Fitz comes out of the door and she sees him and she sees the hunter. I wonder, I mean, we know that Enoch's there to explain that it probably happened. But if Enoch had not been there, I think she would have questioned seeing Fitz at all. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. Because Enoch is there. That's the proof validation that it happened. Yeah. Because I was thinking when when Fitz came out, I didn't know what was going to happen to Enoch. Because if both of them got zoomed away, I, f I thought they were going to play the storyline where... They question it, and it was just the drugs, but it wasn't. And she's actually ready to give up, but then something happens. And I'm so glad they didn't do it that way. Yeah, me too. Because that, to me, that would have been frustrating when we only have 13 episodes. Yeah. Um, it's like, okay, let's get her to him faster than that. Let's get this kind of wrapped up so we can see, move on with the arc of... I agree. 
I agree. Fitz sees Gemma sees Fitz for half a second, and <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I mean, Fitz almost wins this poker game, and then of course Enoch has his meltdown. Yeah. So they're locked up. Gemma sees Fitz for half a second, and then uh, I really, really like the hunter's circle transport thing. I think that's a smart way to do it. Yeah. we. I mean, do we know where he's taking him at this point? No, we no. have no idea. Yeah, because that's... I mean, I thought, when we were talking last week, I thought that it was going to go in the direction of Fitz becoming somebody's, like, slave. That's, yeah. That's literally... I thought they were going to play on last season. And it still kind of happened during the poker where it's like, I'm signing you away for the chips, which I was like, oh, they're going to do the slave thing, and, and they didn't. So I'm glad that it's sped up. It's a sped up. They're not beating around the bush even though this episode could have felt that way because it was fun and with the drugs but it got the point across here yeah. we see Gemma is c- confirming that Fitz is alive that he's well that he's around that he's been been taken they they have a new mission to get him back now and it's actually not just a, a vague expansive one but one that's actually very real and concrete yeah and I'm glad Enoch is there because otherwise I think even if Gemma believed it was Fitz I don't think anyone else would believe yeah. her I love that you brought that up. And of course then we get we get the um we get the concept of 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 the end where we're back on Earth. We see the Sarge and we have no idea what's going on. Sarge and Jason then it's oh the stars, nope, not talking about stars, and we have no idea. Now we need to get that story, which is what I think is gonna happen next episode. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you. Now that you've said that, it makes complete sense. Um I'm I hope, though, we do get a little bit of something with Fitz and where he is going. But I think that's going to be the following yeah. episode, which is kind of going to frustrate me. But oh, it's like, okay, <laughs> we'll deal with it. We'll figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. I, you know what, too? It could be um, that when he lit up, the, when Sarge lit up the sky in the end, maybe it's not even, maybe there's some kind of like, um, I don't know, barrier over Earth that we weren't even aware was there. Ooh, strong. Uh, let's decide who our top three MVPs in order of this episode are. That's right. All of you at home, we want to hear that top three MVPs. Rachel, go. <laughs> so, uh, Enoch, definitely, because if only for the fact that he's there near the end and he can explain everything. Um, Enoch, I'm going to say Daisy, too, because even when she's high, she can still kick butt. So, Daisy. Um, and then, uh, for a third one... I'm going to say, let's go with Gemma, because to survive after taking whatever it was that they ate and not completely freak out, MVP just for that. I'm going to have to go with MVP number one, the hunter. Oh, The hunter was actually the one who's most effective, somehow was able to get out of the chains, was able to contact the other hunters, was able to uh, basically affect Enoch, even though he was... On the ship through a sp- specific signal, he's the one that's accomplished everything, and he doesn't give up. So Hunter is number one for me. Number two is going to be Daisy, because of her scene at the bar where she just kicks everyone out, uh, kicks everyone's ass, and she's so effective and so quick and so powerful and amazing. And my number three is going to be Gemma, even though her hunch was right, what she did was wrong, but it's going to be <laughs> tied in third place with with Fitz for thinking of the sulfur thing and escaping yeah. so i'm gonna give them my top three mvps i'd love to hear what your top three mvps are at home let's get into some news and gossip After Buzz TV news. so the biggest thing is that on deadling deadline not deadling deadline.com um they mentioned abc's marvel's agents of shield was up uh, tick to 0.5 helping boost the two hour 2020 that followed and scored it scored a 0.5 up from last week we also have den of geek with the um, executive producers talking about the show and how they crammed in they're cramming in all the story and how they thought it was going to be really challenging um, but it's actually allowing them to get to the nuts and bolts of what the arc and what the series uh, what the season is going to be about this year. i appreciate it it's actually one of the things that people really like about netflix is that the shorter seasons give you a lot more meat and and not so much bone and fluff and beating around the bush so i appreciate that what we don't like is that we have to wait a week to see the next episode so that happens too but we do get a lot of whoa moments let's play our special segment game whoa whoa that's right whoa so what's this whoa (laughs) moment for you in this episode the moment Daisy and Gemma were walking in to Kitson and they suddenly started hearing and seeing funny things. I was like, oh, no. 
<laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. I'm going to have to go with the moment Daisy started kicking everyone's butt. All the hunters, like, because the hunters came in like bosses, like, oh, sir, you have to check your, <laughs> like, yo, or check our guns. Yeah, beep, beep, beep. Yeah. Like a Matrix moment. And then Gemma went, ma- I mean, uh, Daisy went Matrix on them and kicked all their butts. So I thought that was very whoa love to hear your whoa moment of course let's get into some predictions rachel and now <laughs> what do you think is gonna happen rachel i think i still think that there's a deeper connection between colson and sarge i think that i don't know like they're mentioning um i feel like there is like a link and we're gonna we're gonna find out that somehow when colson died he didn't really die I don't know, um, but okay. So there's that. Um, I think that whatever they used the peg, the pegs on in this to light up the sky. I think that that is probably just a barrier, and that is going to be what they use to destroy Earth mm. or try to destroy Earth. But I feel like there's a, there's another reason. I feel like there might actually be a good reason they're trying to, to destroy Earth. Like if they don't destroy it, something else even worse is going to happen. But we just don't know it yet. And some of their crew is like evil, but not all of them are evil. Mm. Uh, and then I also think that, like you said, I think that we're not going to get to Fitz right away. But then when we do, um, I think that somehow uh i don't think that um gemma's gonna find him after this because i think he's gonna be somewhere random that no one would really know and i think that fitz will get himself out of the situation fitz gets himself out of the situation i think when it comes to the hunter i think chromicon is going to be the one that basically has to give up his vow of secrecy in order to save his best friend fitz and that's going to be how they played. And Chromicon tells them where the hunters have taken him and and why. And they need to explain it to the hunters that the timeline has changed. I also think that we're going to get all Earth stuff next time. And that that grid is possibly an invading force that's coming to Earth in order to mine all of its crystals. We're going to get all these PEGs just taken away from us, not realizing they're everywhere. And you can just have them. Yeah. And thirdly, I think that... We're going to get a little more on this uh, Mac and Yo-Yo situation. I think that's going to come to a head way more than has been let on. I think it's going to become a conflict. So we'll see how that plays. Uh, I appreciate you so much. I predict that we're going to follow you on Twitter. Where can we find you on Instagram? I predict that you can go to, um, well, on Twitter, at Rach Goodman, or on Instagram, at Rachel Radner Author. Oh, okay. So blah, 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 blah. blah. Okay, Rachel yeah. Radner Author. I get yeah, it. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. My writing you. stuff. You can find me at I am Tehran because I am Tehran all across the board. That's I-A-M-T-E-H-R-A-N. And also find me in AfterBuzz hosting and paneling on a slew of AfterBuzz After Shows because all of your favorite TV programs are my favorite TV programs, too. Until next time, when you see me right here at the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. After Buzz show, uh, we will see you guys. See you. Bye. Our founder, Kevin Undergaro, and me, Maria Menunos, would like to thank you for tuning in to After Buzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. <laughs> The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principal. 